talking to my areas group, and I know there's a couple guys on my local computer I want to talk to off the talk group. I just flip over to CQ, 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 talk to them through the local repeater, flip back and talk to the group again. Okay? You can see why I had to think about it for a little while. <laughs> uh, we're still adding feature, but it's ready to go now. Uh, here's where you can find some information. That's on that handout that we handed out as well. Um, and uh, there's a lot more to come. Uh, it's just a matter of time. I mean, we've got, we've got a lot of things we'd like to do with this, but Jonathan K or G4KLX is the university grad student <laughs> and works and is a newlywed. <laughs> so he needs to spend a little time on some of those things as well. We've actually recruited a couple other developers to help, um, uh, but the logistics of that's still being worked out. Um, Anybody can set up a group, just go get the software from here. Uh, if you're a self-assigned in an STN group, you go onto like your friendly neighborhood I, uh, ICOM gateway and register that like you would your personal call sign. And uh, that's just fine with them. At least they haven't come and shot me yet and they had the chance last week in Dayton. <laughs> no, we actually told them that it was coming and they didn't, didn't object. Okay. So, any other questions about StarNet? How are we doing on time? Almost so. Okay. Well, so, if we get the lunch service started right away, we could just be sitting on our sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> so we got plenty of time, so that's good. <laughs> any other questions about StarNet? Would it work with reflectors, or is this kind of a, a better way? You're asking the guy that wrote it. I know. That's <laughs> a lot of questions. Um, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish, okay? If, you, if any of you are in income, you want to hang around because we got something to show you. If not, thank you. Um, um, they're, they're a little bit incompatible unless <coughs> you've bridged a group to a reflector, and we can do that for uh, the extra reflectors. I've also been talking to Robin about doing it for D plus reflectors. Um, his initial reaction was, mm, I don't know if I want to do that, but he definitely said, yeah, I'll go and think about that for a little bit. And I, I chatted with him a little bit at Dayton. We've known each other for a few years, so he knows I'm not evil. <laughs> At least I think he knows that. Uh, but yeah, um, unless they're bridged, it's really not a good idea because there'll be people um, um, the reflector that will hear you talking to the group but don't know what's going on, okay? And uh, they can't get out to all the people on the group if, if the repeaters that some of the people on the group are on are not also connected to the reflector, okay? So, uh, I'm not a fan of 24 by 7 by 365 linking of repeaters. I think you link them for a purpose and then unlink them. Uh, and then this allows you to have much more flexibility because these can interleave in between each other. You're not dedicating a repeater to a certain function. We have a question up here. When do you plan on creating software for a Mac? Yeah, the source is out there. So to work with the Mac right now? No, the source is out there. <laughs> it's just a matter of someone sitting down and doing it. But this is server-side software. Yeah. So. How many people running Max servers? Oh, a lot, yeah. actually. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, it uses what's called the WXGTK uh, toolkit for the GUI. The rest of it's a pretty straightforward C++ code, and it compiles pretty easily once you get past them. So it's just finding someone that has the interest in sitting down and figuring out the little quirks to, to compile them Mac. I use Max. So. It's a bug in some <laughs> Well, I've got plenty of years and plenty of bugs to go around, so we'll, uh, we'll let someone that, that's ready for it, Kenny, uh, <laughs> to try to do that. Um, we have several Mac users in our community, so I'm sure we get some questions. Okay, so um, if you like this idea and there isn't a repeater in your neighborhood and you have a limited budget, <laughs> Uh, it seems to be a problem with hands. 
um, doing your own repeater is an option. Um, uh, you can go buy the shiny boxes or you can build them. Uh, I built one. I actually did it before this, but uh, it still applies. Uh, converting an analog repeater to uh, handle uh, digital voice uh, can be very easy or can be very hard. Okay, here are the basic rules. The repeater must be true FM, not PM. This also applies if you're using a simplex radio on a simplex frequency, but it must be true FM. You need to access the discriminator for the audio. A lot of times that's brought out to the back of the radio already. Um, if you're doing a simplex node, if it's got a 9600 baud packet port on the back of it, you can just plug into that. Okay. Um, same for the transmitter, you need to go right to the modulation point. If you're really smart, you can do IQ modulation, that's better. If you're like me, you just go to the modulator and modulate it uh, to send the signal out, and you need PTT. So, three connections. Um, you can do core, but it's kind of useless because the boards actually look for the digital signal and don't do anything until it gets the digital signal. So, I run my squelch open. Okay, you need a modem board, or you can do the sound card thing. Or if you've got an ICOM controller laying around, there is a circuit that you can build to interface to other types of repeaters. Um, you need a computer with uh, the PC repeater controller or G4 ULF repeater software and gateway software. So you could run uh, IRC DDB gateway, um, or you could run G4 ULF. Or you can even run ICOM software if you have their controller. You adjust the deviation down to about 1.2 kilohertz. This is a narrow band signal. The modulation mask is 6.25 kilohertz. And Bill will tell you there's energy outside of that area, but that's the spec. Uh, if possible, replace your receive filters. Uh, getting 12 and a half kilohertz filters is pretty easy. Getting 6.25 is a little more challenging. 12 and a half will usually work okay on, on most bands, uh, like 70 centimeters. Um, you got to make sure that audio in in and out path is flat. Uh, for example, on my repeater, there was a blocking capacitor in the path that I took out and put in a non-capacitant connection between those two points because the board itself had the blocking capacitor in it. Um, it was uh, pretty easy surgery. Once I figured out, I blew a fuse in the process. Um, it has many, many low components. If you go to my blog, which is k7ve.org, you can kind of see some documentation on how I did mine. So you adjust the levels for the proper modulation ma uh, mask. Everything else is what you've learned over the years about building good repeaters. Get good coax, get good antenna, uh, uh, good duplexers. Uh, I use a narrow banded uh, TKR820N, which you can get on eBay for between $200 and $400, depending on whether they have a duplexer or not. Uh, a lot of them coming out of service right now with the narrow banding of the line mobile radio service. And with the kit, you can narrow band this one as well, but people would rather spend the money for a new repeater. <coughs> and that concludes my portion to take some questions. Ryan has a little something to show you that uh, he and I have been working on in the background uh, that you may find rather interesting. And uh, any final questions here that we can handle? Sir? You're talking about the repair conversions. We're using something like the not quite so many hotspot yes. boards. Maybe. That's exactly the one I'm using. Okay. Because there's also another group, Dutch Star, that puts on board. It well, I actually use exactly. the NQMHS board with the Dutch Star firmware. Right, right. Okay. And he's, he's selling it with the Dutch firmware on it now. Yeah, yeah. If you order the one from <coughs> New Jersey now, you get the Dutch Star firmware on it. You raise the price $10 to include it in the firmware. The kit, I did pick up one of the kits, and they do come with a small outline I see that the service mount that some people might think is hard to solder on. Yeah. So a small option. Yeah. Yeah. 
uh, you can also buy them as a treaty settlement. So. Other questions? Sir, have you tried uh, using the TS-2000 as a repeater function? I, I, I haven't personally. The TS-2000 has been used by a number of people for D-STAR before using these boards, so I can say with a fair amount of confidence you can probably You said you used the uh, NQMS board. Did you take the series capacitor out of the PX series the PX line on that? I took it out of the repeater instead. The repeater had one on that line, and I took that. So the one on the board still exists. Okay, thank you. Because it's it's set for the proper modulation to the GMSK, and so I depended on it rather than the one inside. The Any others? I'm Brian. How much time do we have, John? Uh, you got plenty of time. You got. Oh, in that case, you could have pulled one. John? John? Yeah. Uh, what do you want to use for a tape on this, or do you? Or uh, There's a second tape in there. Do you want a tape? Or don't you? I don't need a tape. Okay. okay so just